Welcome to Happy Crafting, a vlog where we cover tutorials and best practices for Crafter CMS. This week, we're covering retrieving content from Crafter CMS. Let's dig in. At the top of the screen here, we can see the various mechanisms. So let's just go over these real briefly. First, we have a free marker API, which is great for uh, templated projects. It's basically server-side templates that render in a somewhat headed fashion. We also have a JavaScript API, which uh, here the documentation says it's great for SPA and AJAX based applications. Now this JavaScript API is essentially a JavaScript library you can find in NPM that uh, runs either on the client or the server if you're building uh, server side rendering based digital experiences with Node.js. We also support GraphQL. Uh, which is a great gen generalized way to access content uh, in a cross-platform way. We have a search API. We have REST APIs that are out of the box. We have a Groovy-based way to create your own APIs. And we also uh, support Java as a way to integrate with our APIs as well. So that's very similar to Groovy, but just uh, Java-based. So there's something else that's important here, and that is that none of these APIs are exclusive from one another. So one good way to look at that is just to look at this architecture diagram here. When we create content in Crafter Studio, which is our authoring environment, and then publish it to Crafter Engine, which is our dynamic content delivery platform, Crafter Engine can serve that content in all of the ways that we discussed simultaneously. So there's no mutual exclusivity of one API versus another. And that's really, really powerful. That means that we can server-side render that content with an FTL template, and at the same time, serve it through the various REST APIs, whether that's uh, your own APIs that you write in Groovy, our REST APIs, GraphQL, or any of the other options. And that's what it takes to be multi-channel, because you have different types of experiences let's say a website and a mobile experience or a digital assistant or something like that, that you want to leverage the different mechanisms and you don't want to have to choose one style of access for each project uh, and be sort of pigeonholed into the types of digital experiences that you can support. Now let's take a look at that in the real world. So I'm going to jump over to Crafter Studio and this is a project based on the editorial blueprint that I've booted up in my instance of Crafter CMS. And you can see I'm already in edit mode here. Now, this site is server-side rendered with FreeMarker. It's also capturing content, as we discussed, in a completely presentationless way. And I can pull that content out as a GraphQL query or a REST API, and we're gonna try some of that. So. Let's start with a simple edit. So here I am looking at in context preview. This is all rendered by that free marker template. And uh, let's go ahead and make an edit. So I can do that in two ways. I can use the in context editing here, which we call experience builder. And let's just go ahead and type demo. Or I could go to the form and click edit. And this gives me form based content. And we can see there's our change. So let's add like just another little change right here through the form and see that those all go to the same place. And the first thing we want to do is look at, well, how, how did we get this content through FreeMarker? Well, that's simple. I'm going to go to the menu here. And as a developer, I have access to edit template. So if I click edit template here, I can see the markup that drives this page. And this particular field is brought out right here by this tag right here. So we have a crafter dot header. We're tying it to the hero title HTML field. And then we are printing that out through this simple free marker expression here. So it's really easy to do that. And I can, I can show you that. Let's just do a simple change here. We'll just put a set of square brackets around this, which in free marker will just print out those square brackets. So let's click save and minimize. And you can see, Here's our little square brackets that we put around that text. So it's very easy to pull the text out in a uh, server side rendering fashion through FreeMarker. I'm going to go ahead and remove that now. Okay, 
Now let's look at how we can pull that content through other APIs. So jumping back to our documentation, let's start with the content retrieval APIs. And right here at the top of the screen is our uh, content API for retrieving a content item. So you can see that they're pulling the home page here uh, through this URL. Now this is just an example, and I am interested in, in this structure here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it to my clipboard. There's a full API specification here uh, with all of the details, and we can see that it builds up a nice uh, example for us and a response and so on. But uh, I've got what I need in my clipboard, so I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab. I'm just gonna paste this in. And you can see I'm going to localhost, and the API is for the content store. It's called item.json. That's what we're looking for, a specific content item. The item that we're looking for is the homepage in this particular site that we've been working on. And my crafter site is an ID that I need when I am working in studio because it's multi-tenant, so I need to tell it which site I'm going after. And to get that, I can just go back to my crafter studio instance. And you can see here it says site equals. Well, this is my site ID, so I'm gonna copy this. Now I'm gonna jump back to that tab and I'm gonna replace my site from the example with the actual ID of the site that I'm working with and then hit enter. And here we can see the response that we get back, which is the full structure of the content, including all of the copy and references to images and so on, as well as related content. And if you remember, we made a simple edit uh, that said demo exclamation point. So let's search for that. And here you can see that content right here. And since this is an HTML field, we do see the markup along with that copy. So that's a good example of content that is both rendered as HTML to server-side free marker templates, and at the same time, we retrieve that content through an out-of-the-box REST API. Now I could have just done one or just done the other, but here we see both together. Let's add on top of that. Let's get the same content, but through a GraphQL query. So I'm gonna go back into Crafter Studio. I'm gonna open up this sidebar here, and I'm gonna to go to Project Tools, and click on GraphQL. Now, this user interface here is called GraphEQL, and it's nothing more than an easy way to write and issue GraphQL queries. GraphQL is really just a REST API endpoint that accepts GraphQL queries. So this is just a tool to make it easier to work with the GraphQL endpoint. Now, one of the cool features here is called the Explorer. So I'm gonna click on that, and you can see it shows me all of my content types. Well, I wanna query that homepage, so I'm gonna say, let's get the homepage. And what we want back from that is the hero text HTML. So this is what GraphQL is, in fact. It's a way to specify what we want back and specifically from those types of objects, what fields we want back. So in this case, it's a very simple query saying, give me back all of the homepage objects. And when we get those back, we just want the hero text underscore HTML. Let's go ahead and run this. Here we can see our response. Now this is the text under the title that we want. So this is hero text. I actually want hero title. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down the list here and I see hero title HTML. Now you can see I've added that field to this query. Let's go ahead and run it. And now we get back both fields. And here we see our edit. So that's a third way that we can get that content. Now, as I mentioned, there are other mechanisms for this. We have a JavaScript API, we have a Java API, and we have a Groovy API. These are all SDKs with bindings for those languages. I'm gonna show you just one more here, and that's gonna be the Groovy API. Suppose we wanna write our own REST API. We want complete control over the structure of the API, and we wanna put just the fields in it that we want. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close this. We're gonna go into our project and go to scripts. Open up the scripts here. Go to REST, because we wanna create a REST API. And let's say that I wanna create a collection of services that are for a demo. 
So I'm going to create a folder here called demo. And then under demo, I can create other folders to represent parts of the URL, as we'll see. And I can even parameterize those folders in true REST fashion if I want to have part of the slash have some variable that represents the resource that I'm trying to get, I can do that uh, with this structure. But in this case, let's keep it simple. Under demo, I just want to have my REST API. So now I'm going to click on the dots here, which are for actions, and click create new controller. So let's call our service foo. And then we want this API to be a get. So we're going to specify a dot here and then our HTTP method, in this case, get. And that's it. Uh, we could also put dot groovy here, but if we don't do that, Crafter will put it there for us. So I'm going to click create. And this opens a code editor for us. So now we can put whatever we want in here. Let's start with just a simple REST API that returns, let's say, a string and a sum. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a result variable and in Groovy to return a map, I can just return an object like this here and then I'm going to return that. Okay, now we want to put something in that map. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to put a message and we're going to put a sum. So let's add 40 and 2 together and return that. Okay, this looks like a good service to start with. Let's click Save and Minimize. Now we can see our service over here under Demo. It's foo.get.groovy. So let's go ahead and run our service. So I'm going to jump back to this tab where we were calling the out of the box REST API, and I'm going to change the API to the API that we created. So the first part of the URL is slash API. Then we said we wanted to have a demo folder, then foo, and then we're returning a JSON format. So I'm going to say foo.json. I'm going to click enter, and here we see the response to our service. Message, hello world sum 42. This is awesome. Now we want to return some content. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go back to studio. I'm going to go to my service here under scripts and I'm going to click edit or in this case we did a save and minimize so I'll just expand that window and we're going to go ahead and get the home page item into a variable. So we'll say def home page equals site item service dot get site item and the item ID is slash site slash website slash index dot XML. So this is one of the ways you can reference our content through unique store URLs. All right, now we have the home page stored into a variable. Let's just add it to our result. So we're going to say result dot home page equals home page. So in this case, because we're working on code in one tab and running it in another, instead of doing a save and minimize, we'll just do a save. I'm going to jump over to this other tab and click refresh. And here we can see that now we have three fields inside of our object including this home page object with our content. Now, let's say that we want to return just the title field. Well, let's scroll down and let's find that field. Here it is, hero title HTML. So I'm going to copy that into my clipboard. I'm going to go back to Crafter Studio and I'm going to say home page dot Hero title HTML, and let's change this to home page titles. So the variable inside of our result is a custom name, home page title. 
and we're getting that from the home page object and the field hero title HTML. So let's click Save. And now we'll refresh our service invocation. And now we see, again, three fields. One is the message, second one is the sum, and our new field, home page title, with just our variable here. Now, what are we highlighting here? We're highlighting the fact that through this groovy mechanism, one, we're using yet another crafter content API, the Groovy and Java API specifically, and that we can build these custom REST APIs and they can do whatever we want. They can have whatever functionality they want to have and they can take on any shape that they want to have. And this is extraordinarily powerful capability when we need to control what the API acts and looks like. For example, let's say that we have an existing CMS that we're replacing and we want to create APIs that look exactly like that existing system, but we want to replace it with Crafter. This is a great mechanism for that specific use case. Okay, so we've looked at a number of different APIs for retrieving content from Crafter CMS, including retrieving content via free marker templates, retrieving content via GraphQL, retrieving content via our REST API, and using Groovy and our Java API to retrieve content and build custom REST APIs. Again, this is Russ. I hope you found this crafter tidbit useful and happy crafting.